inserting target genes. Okay, so three steps. First one, we're gonna isolate the target gene, which there's a whole video on that. You need to watch that first. So for example, we're gonna say we're gonna use restriction enzymes, which will leave sticky ends. Let's say for our example here, we want to make some insulin. Most common questions come up on insulin. I could ask you to make any other protein. But we've got our insulin, our target gene over here in our DNA. Uh, I'm gonna make this a bit smaller for our diagram. Okay, a bit of non-coding DNA either side. And then we've got our restriction sites, the palindromic sequences in red. And that's all that we're really concerned about. The DNA obviously continues. Okay, so once we use our restriction enzyme, remember it doesn't cut in a like samurai chop straight line. You get this ziggity zaggity step. And then once we've isolated our gene, it's gonna look, try and keep everything nicely in line if you can. It just makes a bit more sense when you look at it. So we've got this top section being included. That gives us our sticky end on the top and then we've got our sticky end on the bottom there. And so this is our fragment of DNA that we've isolated. The scale throughout all of this is gonna to be totally off. I'm not looking at this to be too scale, but yeah, this is. I wanna show you the processes as they go. Second stage, we, there's a whole video on this, hence the lack of detail. We wanna insert the target gene into a vector. Well, a vector is something that moves DNA from one place to another. So there's two examples we're gonna look at. First one I'm basically gonna pass over. We can use a virus, the life cycle of a virus, if you don't know anything about that, then there's a video on viruses and how they work. Basically their whole life biology is to insert their DNA into a host cell. So viruses that infect bacterial cells and do this for us are called bacteriophages. So this isn't a bacteria, this is a virus that infects a bacteria. They do the whole of the next process basically automatically through their life cycle. So the questions never ask about them. They might ask you to name another type of vector, bacteriophage or a virus, no worries, but they're never really gonna get an in-depth question because the virus does it all automatically. The type that they always ask about, therefore, about plasmids. So plasmids are double-stranded loops of DNA that transfer genes between bacteria. You could say circles of DNA, they are circular. So let's draw a plasmid over here. Again, scale relative to this, totally out double-stranded and round, and I'm gonna have in here a restriction site. And you bet it, we're gonna use the same restriction enzyme. So that's the most important thing in this next, next point here, lots of questions pop up on this, we're gonna use the same restriction enzyme. Yeah, to cut the plasmid open. And this means that the sticky ends that we've got here and the sticky ends we've got here because we use the same enzyme, same palindromic site, these ends will be complementary. Really commonly asked. Okay, so let's draw this being patched in I'm gonna draw my black bit, the, the bit that we're not interested in and the plasmid a lot smaller, so we just have the space to try and demonstrate what's going on best here, all right. Just gonna draw that kind of as a semicircle. Now, so we've got the sticky end on the inside here, and it's gonna be on the outside here, 
and that's what belonged to the plasmid. We're now going to take this piece and it's going to come over here and it's going to slot in. I'm not going to draw the black bits in here, I'm just going to draw the gene with the sticky ends on it. It's just way easier to draw. The gene is going to go, oh, I'm going to try and make this as round as I can. There's my gene. Okay, and this, this piece has got the sticky end on the bottom on this side. Don't draw it touching here. And, oh, we're a bit far away. I'm going to draw it. I'm just going to have a bit more. Again, you don't want, you want the bits touching that they belong to. Okay, so we've got the gene sticky end. Gene sticky end. These are obviously joined by hydrogen bonds. We don't have a connection here, 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 and here yet. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm even just going to make this gap just a fraction bigger. I want that those gaps to be nice and clear because the hydrogen bonds can form. We've got hydrogen bonds, complementary base pairing going on here and here between the sticky ends. That's not enough to seal it back up again. This has been totally spliced open. So what we do is use an enzyme called DNA ligase. So DNA ligase is gonna reform these bonds here, reform the sugar phosphate backbone, which is the phosphodiester bonds. So I'm gonna draw that with an enzyme, which is I'm gonna do as a green circle here, here. Oh, we've got quite a big gap there. I'm just gonna move that a little bit closer here and here. So DNA ligase is gonna join up all these dots and then we're gonna end up with, this is probably gonna be the least round of all my plasmid drawings, but you get the picture. Okay, so we go from here. So with DNA ligase has sealed it up. We've now got a continuous loop, double-stranded, and now we can call this recombinant DNA. Again, another super important key term. So recombinant DNA is DNA from more than one source. I mean, it could be from the same organism, basically from two different organisms. So in this example, we've obviously got the plasmid DNA and we've got our insulin gene, let's say it's from a human. So this guy here is a recombinant plasmid. This is going to come up time and time again, so make sure you're familiar with it. Now we've got this on its own, not very useful to us. Third and final step is inserting the vector into the bacteria. Okay, so any organism that contains recombinant DNA, DNA from more than one organism or source, we call a transformed organism. Another super important key term. How do we get the plasmid? I mean, if this is a bacteriophage, then it's gonna do it automatically. There's no process that has to be really controlled by the scientists in the lab. If you're doing this with using a plasmid, which is what they're always gonna ask, you can do this in one of two ways. You can use ice cold calcium chloride and then heat shock them. Basically, you're stressing out the bacteria and you're making the cell wall more likely, more permeable to the plasmids. Or you can do something called electroportation, which is new to the specification this year. This is basically applying an electrical current. But they both do the same thing. They both increase the permeability of the bacterial cell wall. And that means that it's more likely to take up the recombinant plasmid. So again, scale totally out of whack. I'm gonna draw a bacterium here. This may be the cell wall, uh, cell membrane. Let's put the cell wall in there as well. And whilst we're at it, we'll make it look a little bit bacterially. Let's have the loop of DNA, some ribosomes. Okay, now I'm gonna draw my plasmid in there. 
scale totally different, but target gene, insulin gene is in there. Got, oh, I'll put my little palindromic sites on there. Oh, it's going to be a pretty loose palindrome. So once the recombinant plasmid is inside our bacterium, we have formed a transformed bacterium. In some old papers, this was called transgenic. Same thing, transformed is the better word to use. So these key terms are really going to come up time and time again. These techniques, I imagine electroportation, because it's new, is most likely to be asked, but you're increasing their chance of going in by increasing the permeability. Most importantly, you've got to use the same restriction enzyme for isolating the target gene and cutting open your plasmid. DNA ligase seals it all up again. Recombinant DNA is DNA that contains uh, DNA from more than one source, such as more than one organism, and transformed organisms are contain recombinant DNA.